Today on MultiGP News, could drone racing be flying into Winter Olympic Games in Korea? We talked to a chapter organizer who gives us details about the possibilities. Plus, students from all over the country are taking technology to new heights, and it's the STEM field that's giving them wings. And we're just two days away from the first ever U.S. Collegiate Drone Racing Championship at Purdue University. Dozens of pilots from more than 20 schools gearing up to battle it out for the top spot. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chris Thomas. And I'm Hefte Puente. All this and much more today on MultiGP News. Want to start racing? It's free and simple to join. Just visit MultiGP.com to create a profile. Then look for chapters in your area, find their events, and get ready to race. Live from the Multi-GP headquarters, this is Multi-GP News with your host, Chris Thomas. Let's get started with our top stories in this week's Morning Quad. It's the next step in race timing systems. The TBS Event Tracker by Team Black Sheep offers the highest accuracy and up to eight racers can use the device at once. The LapSync timing software was developed by James Elkins. He created the program to make running races and capturing times as easy as clicking a few buttons. In a statement, Elkins said, quote, I knew I wasn't going to get rich making racing software for a bunch of drone racers, so why not help it the advance the community that is multi-GP? And FPV Drone Racing comes to Jonal from May 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. Multi-GP and the good folks at Jonal invite the curious, the enthusiast, the seasoned RC pilots to connect, fly, and compete with us. This is a great opportunity to get an intimate and up-close perspective on what makes this emergent portion of the hobby so exciting. The Joe Nall event is one of the largest RC gatherings in the U.S., with nearly 14,000 people passing through the entrance alone. MultiGP will set up a full-scale drone racing challenge course with air gates and flags designed for fun and competition. Make sure to enter the MultiGP Drone Racing Challenge held Friday and Saturday night for a chance to win $1,200 in cash and prizes. FPV Live will also be there live streaming the event. Log on to tripletreeaerodrome.com for more information. Also, there's still plenty of sponsorship opportunities available, so if you're interested, contact sales at multigp.com. And Alex Grieve, better known as Ivy Crazy, the mastermind behind Ion Antennas, designed to be both a transmitter and a receiver, the Ion is a high-gain, compact, circularly polarized, omnidirectional antenna. This means it has the highest gain available, offers incredible video clarity without worrying about breakup, and it's one of the lightest antennas in its class. Pilots, the Ion is made in the USA and will be available for purchase next month. So if you're looking to get the maximum range out of your video link, pick up a set of Ion antennas, enjoy your flight. We're just two days away from the first ever U.S. Collegiate Drone Racing Championship at Purdue University, sanctioned by MultiGP. 40 plus pilots from more than 20 schools will battle for the title. We've been telling you about it for weeks, so you better check it out on fpvlive.tv. fpvlive.tv. And the third regional qualifiers in the nation kicking off in Ackworth, Georgia. Over 120 spectators gathered to watch dozens of pilots compete for their chance at the top five spots in the 2A regional finals. MultiGP News reporter Todd Wall was there with more on the story. Guys, on the tone in less than five. A big turnout for the third regional qualifier in the nation held in Georgia. More than 100 spectators gathered to watch 32 pilots battle it out for their chance at five of 35 spots in the two-way regional finals. The first time is disorienting. You'll get sick your stomach. When you hit something, I'm like ducking my head down and stuff. When you're flying, you're flying at this angle. It's looking at what you're flying at. You're flying around the course like this. It's After completing the practice rounds, only 27 pilots moved on to compete in the qualifiers. You know, we were maybe maxing out at 50, 60 miles an hour a little over a year ago, and now we're 80, 100 miles an hour. The event, hosted by the Drone Racing Club at the Cobb County RC Field in Ackworth, Georgia, 
The track, a mock-up of the Multi-GP Regional Finals course, which is designed to test the pilot's speed, agility, and skills. Four, three, two, one, and time's up. Finish your last lap. The gravity gate being the biggest challenge to skill for all these pilots, some got it down and others were left down on the ground wondering how they did it. You kind of teach yourself because when you when you crash, you break something, you got to fix it. The day culminated into a dramatic runoff between four pilots, Steve Smitty Smith and Joel Toothstock Fuller for third and fourth place, while Nick Wild Willie Willard, who was ranked 10th last year nationally, and Tyler T. Med FPV Medler went for fifth and sixth place respectively. With the number three spot going to Steve Smitty Smith and the number two going to Jade Bird Dog Warren. And Blake Nub Sam's taking the number one spot with a two point lead and the fastest lap in the race. What do you feel like being a winner, man? Come on. I feel awesome. I came out here to beat Nick. And, uh, I, I finally got it. He's mad at me. <laughs> As we get closer to the 2017 regional finals, we'll give you weekly updates on chapter standings and regional qualifiers right here on MultiGP News. And it's time for a break, but when we come back, drones are getting kids into the STEM field like never before. We'll meet several groups of students around the country who are taking technology to new heights. Plus, could drone racing be the next big sport at the Winter Olympic Games in Korea? We'll introduce you to one of the main chapter organizers there with all the details. If you liked science when you were growing up, you were probably called a nerd. I was called a nerd and he was probably called a nerd, but, but drones are making science cool again. Thanks to drones, the STEM field is expanding faster than ever. Multi-GP news reporter Jesse Friedman has more. Students from coast to coast are getting re-energized about the STEM field and drones are a huge part of it. STEM is the present and the future of our schools. It actually is what kids are interested in and that's what brings them to the building. And then while they're there, they're learning other things that we have to teach them. But this is the way that they're able to take their knowledge and put it into practice. Nowadays, drones have almost too many uses to count. So the engineers of tomorrow are already hard at work making sure drone technology keeps up with the ever-growing demand. They're looking at how they can apply the drone technology to actually do other things in society. So there are projects around agricultural applications of drones. There's applications around um, materials for, for drones and just crafting and designing to make it faster, to make it more stealthier. So. A few months ago, I went to an event in Broward County, Florida, the sixth largest school district in the country. On a Friday afternoon, a group of high school students held a workshop teaching middle school students about drones. They had a station for building, a simulator station, and a drone photography station. There was drone painting, and an exercise where they had to use a drone to deliver a package, an idea many delivery companies are researching right now. Inspiring younger kids to do it is a great thing because that means in the future we'll have more people to be in the hobby. And the more people are in the hobby, the more fun it is, the more help there is, the bigger it can get, the better. More recently, there was an event in Baltimore, Maryland, which was covered by the RT American News Network and several other local news outlets. Members of the multi-GP chapter Maryland Quad Racers teamed up with the Baltimore Drone Racing League, Global Air Media, and Open Works to bring drone racing right into the neighborhood. I think Baltimore, um, there's a void uh, that needs to be filled for kids to have an after-school STEM activity. They co-hosted the Baltimore Drone Prix, an event aimed at teaching young kids, especially in the inner city, about drones. Well, one of the things that happen when we're teaching kids about the drones is that they, first of all, they enjoy it. It's a lot of fun to fly. They learn a lot. But at the end of the camp, it's like, what's next? We built the drone. What do we do now? So we wanted to have something else for them. And the racing has just been really popular. I filmed another event in Miami, Florida, where members of the multi-GP group Miami FPV Racers and the drone racing team The Gravity Goons hosted an exhibition at a local park. Dozens of kids and their parents showed up and got a first-hand lesson in first-person V racing and got to try their hands at some tiny whoops. So we got Hunter here, 
And uh, he's going to be creating his uh, first ever multi GP account. So just put your name. I think that'll work. Hunter FPV, I like it. Hey, yes, we're going to go ahead and be there. Great job. So there's your profile. Boom. This week, multi GP hosted its first drone discovery webinar along with PCS Adventures one of the leading companies when it comes to introducing children to the STEM field. Both companies recognizing that drones and STEM go hand in hand. For MultiGP News, I'm Jesse Friedman. And while we're on the topic of students, we can't say enough. Tune into FPVLive.tv this weekend for coverage of the Collegiate Drone Racing Championship. Now, he's a chapter organizer who brought MultiGP to South Korea. He's also the designer and manufacturer of the Stargate and a good friend. MultiGP news reporter Frank Menate spoke with Jung Soo Choi. Hear why he says drone racing has a high chance of being in the next Winter Olympic Games. He's the man that brought MultiGP to South Korea. He's also the designer and the manufacturer of Stargate. James Choi believes drone racing is in high demand and has the power it needs to be in the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang. So I think, yeah, the uh, racing drone become, the, yeah, demo game as the, one of the demo game as in this year's Pyeongchang Olympic game, I think. James has always been interested in racing and RC, but once he was introduced to FPV racing, he saw all the business opportunities in the sport. Yeah, I approached uh, drone by business. There are two major organizations other than MultiGP who hold drone racing events in Korea. James knew there was more to the sport than just organizing events. Oh, yes, uh, in Korea we have two big organi organizations for the, dro uh, the racing drone. Uh -huh. One is uh, uh, drone uh, KDRA and Kama. Once Choi heard about the multi-GP organization, he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Organize events focus more on the pilots. The main reason is I love the, you know, the remote control and flying the you know, aircraft, right? right? So when I met every organization, they people, they only focus on about, you know, the, how to organize the you know, new event. You know? Dozens of pilots come out to compete during James's multi-GP events, but the demand is so high that not everyone can participate. Uh, normally, I just cut down 24. So bigger than 24 is not enjoying. That is kind of competition. <laughs> Uh, but many my friends called to me, can I get in there? I didn't, you know, I, I couldn't resist, but uh, if I just go uh, in local, can I, can I resist by in locally? I said, no, no, just I cut down. One thing is for sure, drone racing is a popular sport in Korea, and pilots are getting faster and better every day. Because it, in Korea, it come up, you know, e-sport is famous. And what's in the future for multi-GP Korea? Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I will keep my my the, the chapters keep going to spread you know multi GP concept. So already one I made one you know another you know the new organizer in you know south of the Korea. So I I, I hope we I build you know uh, three or four more you know the uh, Korean organized locally. So we make the you know Korean league. And for the International Open, Choi says he has one pilot who will take it down. I bring one and one one pilot from <laughs> Korea. Uh, yeah, I will not uh, you know the select you know top pilot. I I find you know some new beginners, but uh, who has become more you know Advanced. big improvement. Yeah, young. I will yeah I will choose the young because already Min Chan, Young Lok, they are young. But uh, they already have everything, so okay. yeah, I want some new new pace.
you would like your chapter featured in a, an upcoming episode, go ahead and contact us at news at multigp.com. That's all the time we have for this episode of MultiGP News. If you have an event, a story, a product, an experience on recent uh, flights you'd like to have featured on this upcoming episode of MultiGP, just send us an email to news at multigp.com. And the regional series picks up again this weekend, so make sure to check back next week for an update on the regional series. And a full recap of the college championship at Purdue University will also be coming up next. Thanks for watching. I'm Hefti Puente. And I'm Chris Thomas. Remember, reach out to us, like I said just a second ago, news at this little at thing, multigp dot, not the word dot, the little dot com. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in being showcased in the next episode of MultiGP News, please contact us at news at multigp.com. If you like this video, press the like button below and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel.